This is a special edition of Headbangers Ball tonight. By now, you've heard about the tragic events of Wednesday night. Dimebag Darrell was shot and killed on stage at a Damage Plan show. But tonight, we wanted to pay tribute to Dime's life and music. Jamie's on tour right now in Florida, and it's an honor and a privilege for me to be here at this time to represent our community and to help us all deal with this. We've got Jamie on the phone. Jamie, are you there? Yeah. I know you're pretty tight with Daryl. What do you want to say to everybody at this time? Do you have a favorite memory, Jamie? Yeah, I mean, there's so many. I think, um, you know, just speaking for myself and, and all of Hate Breed, um, Dime gave us so many just invaluable memories, the best times of our lives. Uh, he was a, just the embodiment of heavy metal, oh, just a wonderful man, generous and quite possibly one of the greatest guitar players of all time. I agree. Um, you know, when I think about uh, the touring and all the parties and everything, it just, it always brings a smile to every one of our faces and he's just always there for us and a great friend and he's going to be truly missed. Yes, he and will. One, one yeah. other thing I'd like to say too is you know, as a musician, he always inspired me to go out there and play my heart out. You know, it doesn't matter for Dime if it was 20 kids or 20,000 kids. He always gave it 110%. And, you know, a lot of musicians um, look to him, you know, for inspiration just because he was one of the great. Yes, he was. He definitely was. Jamie, thank you for taking the time to call in and talk to us. And stay safe out there, bud. I'll see you soon. All right, yeah. Thanks for everything. Thanks for doing this for time. You got it, buddy. I'd like to share some of my own memories. When I first heard of Daryl, when he was uh, just newly starting Pantera, I was looking for a guitar player. This is after So Far So Good So What was released, and I needed to make a little lineup change, which I'm pretty famous for. I had called up Daryl. I just hired Nick Menza on drums, and I said, Daryl, I'd like you to play guitar for me. And he said, sure, man, but uh, I need to bring my brother. And I said, um, what does your brother do? I thought he was a guitar tech or something. He said, no, he plays on drums. And I said, well, I just hired Nick Menza. And he said, you know, basically, that he wasn't going to be able to do it unless his brother came along. It was uh, um, a missed opportunity for me, I believe. Um, anyways, tonight we've got some damage plan and Pantera videos. But first, let's check in with MTV News' Gideon Yego for the latest on what happened in Ohio. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Dave. I'm actually here in the parking lot of the El Rosa Villa Lounge, which is the club here in Columbus, Ohio, where on Wednesday night, Pantera and Damage Plan guitarist Dimebag Daryl Abbott, 38, was shot along with three fans in a bizarre club shooting that we're only starting to make sense of now. The shooting took place at 10 p.m. shortly after Damage Plan got on stage and started their set. Uh, the shooter was a 25-year-old, apparently disgruntled fan named Nathan Gale. There were many eyewitnesses here in the parking lot at the Candlelight Vigil on Thursday night, and this is what they saw. I actually talked to the gunman probably an hour before all this happened. He asked me how many bands were playing, and I said, well, there's going to be three locals and then damage playing. He was like, oh, I don't want to see these locals. I'm only here for damage playing. That's it. I was standing front row center about 40 seconds into their damage playing set. Shots were fired. All you heard was pop, pop, pop. At first, I thought it was a sound effect. Dude came up, shot him in the back, and then grabbed him by the, in a headlock and shot him three times in the head. You could hear the guy scream scream something about you left Pantera. You could hear that over all the music, over gunshots, everything. You could hear that. All of a sudden, people started yelling and screaming, somebody's got a gun, somebody's got a gun. No one really knew what was going on. Everybody's running everywhere. Dimebag's brother went over to the um, microphone over by the bar and said, call 911. This ain't no joke. So I ran down and I told him, you know, I said, I'm a nurse. Let me help. You know, let me in there. I did chest compressions for 15, 20 minutes at least. I can't believe anybody would ever do anything this stupid over another band. It's not like he was gone forever. They could have always gotten together 10 years down the road and made another album, but I don't know. Though some eyewitnesses claim Nathan Gale made comments about Pantera's breakup before opening fire, Columbus police still have no official motive for the killings. Fans at the vigil look to each other to cope. So how have you been doing today? Not good. I've cried a lot and it's, it's sad. Like I haven't really eaten today and it's just, it, I mean, it's my home, like, you know, this is my club that I go to all the time and that this would happen at my home, it just, it's, 
It's upsetting that it's so real. If ever words were spoken, painful and untrue. What brought me down here is, uh, first off, for the love of the music and for Dimebag Daryl. He was one of the most prophetic metal guitar players I've ever heard in my life. What makes him a legend? Listen to him. I mean, like, he's amazing. The reason he was a legend was because he did what he did for the love of the music. And it was Daryl's music that fans will remember him by. Love! Love! You take this love! It's really just something you could bang your head into a wall with, you know, get you pumped and get you moving, get some anger releasement and from, you know, within your body. And it's just real all-around good music. Obviously, he will be missed. We're going to keep you guys updated on the story as it keeps developing over on MTVNews.com and here on air. But stay tuned now for more Headbangers Ball. Tonight, we're remembering Daryl Lance Abbott, better known to his fans as Dimebag Daryl. Another story I'd like to share with you was one time MTV had come to my house to interview me and asked me about some of my influences. And I said I didn't really have any influences, but I had kind of ripped people off. And the interviewer had asked me if I thought anybody had ripped me off. And I said, no, nah, because I didn't really want to say anything. And she said, camera's not on. It's not rolling. And I said, nah, no, really, the camera's not rolling. And I said, okay, panther in Spanish. And the reason I said that was because Daryl had told me when he heard Peace Sells But Who's Buying My Second Record that it had changed his life. I was really flattered. I didn't know that it was going to cause any problems with them. And I went to them and, and apologized. And, and we made up. It was, forgiveness was in the air. It's a novel concept. I think more people need to try forgiveness. Right now, let's take another look at Dimebag doing what he did best. Here's the Damage Plan video, Breathing New Life. special edition of Headbangers Ball, tribute to Dimebag Daryl. I remember when I was touring with Pantera over in Europe, playing in Holland, Daryl and his guitar tech cat had showed up backstage before the show and had a new tattoo. One of the lyrics in one of my songs called Sweating Bullet says, Someday you too will know my pain and smile its black tooth grin. Anybody that's seen Pantera's home videos have seen that they have a drink called the black tooth grin. Also, I noticed that Daryl's tattoo said black tooth grin on it and had a black tooth on his leg. That's one of uh, my more fonder memories of him seeing him do something that honoring to me. I know that Daryl had every tour he'd gone on had done something to remind him of the tours. Also, all the musicians that he respected, he had gotten a tattoo to honor them. So it was very um, honoring for me. In his short amount of time on earth, he made a lot of music that will be remembered by a lot of people. Here's a look back at his life and legacy. Dimebag Daryl Abbott was one of the most admired guitarists in heavy metal. He and his brother Vinny founded Pantera in 1983, and in 87 they were joined by singer Phil Anselmo to form what would become known as the Pantera lineup. That lineup seared its way onto the metal landscape with the 1990 release of the thrash influence Cowboys from Hell. Songs like Cemetery Gates showcase what would become Dimebag Daryl's trademark guitar style. Powerful, innovative, and unpredictable. Cowboys was followed two years later by the unrelenting vulgar display of power. A record that thanks to Dimebag's shreds and Anselmo's screams, more than lived up to its name. Pantera were the kings of the hardest metal around. A status confirmed on them with 1994's Far Beyond Driven, which debuted at number one. To the stunned surprise of those who'd been unaware of Pantera's 
growing legion of fans. That record proved to be the band's commercial peak. In the years that followed, hard rock tastes headed in the new metal direction of Korn and the Deftones, while Pantera was dealing with internal conflicts, including Anselmo's drug use. But the Texans stuck resolutely to their guns, touring nonstop, headlining OzFest in 1997, and releasing their last studio album, 2000's Reinventing the Steel. Three years later, Phil Anselmo decided he was through with his bandmates, and the ousted Abbott brothers left to form Damage Plan. Along with vocalist Patrick Lackman and bassist Bob Zilla, they released their debut, Newfound Power, in February of this year. During one of his last appearances on MTV in January of 2004, Dimebag told Jamie Jasta how excited he was to be back and rocking as hard as ever with Damage Plan. We're back with a Damage Plan to blow it up everywhere. Dimebag, his brother, and his bandmates in Pantera and Damage Plan not only influenced a new generation of heavy bands, but they'll forever have the respect of metalheads the world over for their dogged determination to stick with the powerful sound that got them into rock in the first place. People that, that love this form of music have loved it since from way back Sabbath, Zeppelin, early days, you know. And dude, uh, we still got those kind of cats that come out to our shows. And uh, once you're into it, you're in it for a lifetime. So, I mean, and maybe it's not the coolest thing when it comes to the what's on top of the chart or whatever at that time, but that, that's been on top of the chart on and off, on and off a million times. Through the midst of that, we just kept running a steel rod right down the middle of everybody's crap. And every time that falls, we're still standing strong there. So, you know, we'll be here forever. United and hard when we stand, so bring it on. Welcome back to Headbangers Ball, remembering the life and music of Dimebag Daryl. Scott Ian from Anthrax is on the phone right now. Scott, can you hear me? Yeah, Dave, I, I can hear you. How you doing, Scott? I'm all right. How are you? Can you tell us where you were when you heard the news? Um, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And uh, uh, how did you feel when you heard what happened to Daryl? Uh, it's just a, you know, stunned disbelief. It's, it's absolutely shocking. It's senseless and horrible and, you know, there's not enough adjectives to describe it. I understand. Does this make you have any kind of fear about playing live yourself? Uh, you know, after all these years of playing and uh, obviously playing 20 years worth of shows of, with kids stage diving, I, I can't imagine not thinking about this anytime someone jumps up on a stage. Exactly. It's, you know, I've never thought about anything like this before. and uh, I don't know that it's going to, you know, change me in any way but except for the fact that you know how could you not think about it all the time right well do you have any good memories that you'd like to share with our viewers this evening maybe a, a message to daryl's family well yeah i mean my my thoughts are with rita and, and with with Vinny and it, you know the whole extended uh, damage plan pantera family i mean you know how it is with those guys once you've shared a drink with those guys you basically oh yeah you know, you basically become a family member, and I mean, I've known Dimebag since 1985. Uh, the guys played on our last three records. You know, I mean, we've had a long, long friendship, and uh, I, I've never been through like this this with anyone in my life. You know, I haven't lost somebody that I've known for that long, so it's uh, I'm kind of like a zombie right now. <laughs> I understand. Well, drive careful, Scott. Thank you so much for calling in. And uh, we're going to go to another video from Damage Plan. This is called Explode. Okay, I just want to say one last thing. Uh, society already looks at all of us in the metal community as being really hateful and being insane. 
I know that there's a lot of love in this community being an elder statesman myself. I also know that Daryl was a very gentle soul. I do not think that if he knew that playing this hostile and aggressive music that it would have led to his untimely death, that he wouldn't have rethought that. I believe that you can be angry, but just don't act on it. I also know that anger and hatred lead to murder. Some old guy named James said that to me. And I also know that if we all stick together, that we can enjoy this music as, as angry and hostile as the music is without this leading into another tragic situation like this. Coming up next, the Headbangers Ball that was supposed to air tonight featuring full-blown chaos. Jamie and the band taped the show a week ago before this all went down. But first, a classic Pantera video, Cemetery Gates. And our condolences once again to Dime's family and loved ones. May he rest in peace. <laughs> 